This is another one of those slightly confusing controllers. It might be plastered with lime green, or maybe you picked up a controller plastered in royal blue. Come to find out, you just bought a licensed product for Xbox or PlayStation that doesn't actually work on those consoles, or PC for that matter, which I know is crazy because I always tell you compatibility is pushed for anything on PC. No, this is a mobile controller. That's right, that chunk of plastic in your pocket. Only if it's an iPhone. If it's an Android click off this video and go watch this one. This is an iOS specific mobile controller, so anything running the latest and greatest iOS build. Now that we've removed any potential confusion right up front during the intro of the video before we get into the most comprehensive review of this controller on YouTube, now we can all face this with an open mind and took us and accept this controller as it is. One of the best controllers for use on the iOS, especially if you need pass through charging because nothing eats your battery life quicker than gaming. Maybe watching a high res movie with the brightness up, but still. I know I'm taking too long, don't cause a riot, because because we have the power to perform a kick-ass review on this channel. Hell of in-depth review of the Riot Power, coming in three, two, one. Quick disclaimer for my audience, the Stallions and Stallionettes, this controller was sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about it, so if there's any cons, shortcomings, or areas of improvement, you're going to hear about it, so these companies can make better products over time. Some very subtle lime green branding, as this is a licensed Xbox product, but mind you, not for use on an Xbox One or Series console, it's for Xbox though. It's an Xbox controller though. If you're confused, what's there to be confused about? To minimize that confusion, a very small subtle placard letting you know that it is made for iPhone, iPad, and iPods. I really wish I still had my iPod touch. Now such a small minute thing, but I just wanted to mention it quickly. This little pull tab here is a very soft, silky, satiny material. Feels very nice on the fingertips and will probably only be touched once when you're unboxing it. It felt good for two seconds though. Tell you that. Best two seconds of my unboxing experience. One of those boxes that has a little outer sleeve. If you want to pause the video and scan the screen with your smartphone, you could you could do that. That's a thing. This flips up like a little peekaboo, how do you do? And what pops out is a little trial to Game Pass Ultimate. First one to pause the screen and type that and successfully gets themselves a month of Game Pass Ultimate. Now as for the included accessories, you do have the cell phone clamp inside of this inside of this plastic bag. And if it looks like there might be an instruction manual, pamphlet or brochure in here, there's not a physical instruction manual. We live in a digital era. Go ahead and scan a QR code. It's this one, the green one on the left. You're right. Well, if we're looking at it this way, it's both of our rights. We share the same right and the same wrongs. Wow, that was deep. I'm okay with this method of delivery for an instruction manual because it does minimize paper, but it's still nice to have a physical instruction manual. Little paper cut hazard of the job. So the only real included accessory is the cell phone clip or mount, which in my opinion should be a standardized feature considering the only platform that this controller is for is gonna be iOS devices. It'd be just silly, just absolutely wonky if you needed an accessory to use it that wasn't included. You do have some lime green rubber pads in the top and bottom to clip your phone into place and you do have a good amount of extension. So even if you have a big phone, you can clamp that bad boy in there, no problem. And also you will get a lot of adjustments so you can dial in your view angle to the right degree. And your controller is held in this little plastic sneeze guard. Now, before we go anywhere with this review, one thing I need to mention right off a of jump street, a huge con, huge shortcoming in my opinion, is the fact that this cable, this lightning cable is not modular. It cannot be detached. So if this cable gets crimped, pinched, cut, ate by your dog, whatever, or you just wanna switch it out for maybe a longer cord, this is permanently affixed. It's not modular, can't be swapped out. I don't like that at all. Okay, moving on. As far as the cosmetics, the appearance, the looks of this controller, something about the subtle lime green pop peeking through that flat matte eggshell white faceplate and rear shell looks really good to me. And that's continued with the triggers and bumpers as well. Just a handsome controller IMO, or in my opinion. The other aspect that makes this a handsome controller is going to be these face buttons. They are a gloss black with white lettering, and yes, piano black will collect fingerprints and maybe even micro scratches over time, but it does look gorgeous, especially with this colorway of flat white and lime green. It looks 
great. This is a good looking controller. Five out of five. As for the weight with the included cable that was permanently attached, 237 grams. The manufacturer's advertised weight is here. Should be the same, I mean, in essence. And as for the measurements, I'm not gonna go ahead and bust out my soft measuring tape because this is not a unique shell. The dimensions and measurements are identical to a stock factory OEM Xbox One or Series controller. The only difference between the Xbox One and Series measurement wise, Microsoft shaved a few millimeters off the bumpers. And there's a different rib texture on the bumpers and triggers. And they added the share button, obviously. In my opinion, the Xbox One and Series controllers are dang near perfect ergonomically. They're very comfortable. And this is no different because it's that exact shell design. Sick. Now this clipper mount does something completely different than any other mobile controller I've tested. And it's good for ergonomics or comfort, less wrist fatigue, but bad for actually being able to see the face buttons, i.e. You can't see X, B, or Y, or the bumpers or triggers because the cell phone is clearly blocking your visibility towards those face buttons. Granted, if you've played with an Xbox controller, you probably have memorized where all the face or action buttons are, but if you don't, you're not gonna have that visual aid of looking down and seeing, mm, that's the X button, all right. I'm a casual gamer. I don't know which face button this is because your cell phone is entirely chopping into your visibility, your line of view with your controller. That does wonders for ergonomics because the weight is actually distributed over the middle of the controller as compared to other cell phone clip controllers, which are usually up here. So you have the several grams of weight of your cell phone and case and maybe a battery bank if the controller doesn't have pass through charging like this. And it makes it really hard to comfortably mobile game for anything longer than about a half hour. You don't really get that fatigue with this controller because the weight is center slung. Jesus. Jesus. Not cutting that out of the video. Uh, don't do that, that's a hazard. That can injure you, careful. You actually cannot insert the cell phone clip the wrong way. It, 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 you can only shove it in one way, which is the correct way. And then the stock lightning cable is a good length. It wouldn't need to be any longer than this to plug to your even tablet. I actually left the stock Velcro tie back in place and just pulled myself a little bit of slack and popped her in like this. Uh, uh. There we go. And that's your pass through charging. So we've already discovered that you don't wanna whip this controller around very fast, but if you're holding it stationary as you probably are. Okay, this is kind of uncomfortable. The cord is touching my my skin. I don't like that. Okay, no, that's, that's better. Pretty much the best comfort you're gonna get from mobile gaming, which again, isn't saying a lot because you have the additional weight of a cell phone on top of your controller, but pretty gosh darn comfortable. I'm giving it a four out of five. If they wanted to squeak out a 4.5 or a five out of five, shave about an inch off this mount so it brings the cell phone closer to the actual shell of the controller. And then I'd like to see more clamping force in the, well, clamp, because there's no reason that shaking it, even semi-aggressively, should have popped out my phone and almost clocked me in the chin on camera. Would have made for good content though. AK-40 Kevin loses two teeth to a Riot Power controller. As for a quality control reputation, Riot Power doesn't have a positive or negative quality control reputation. Nobody in the gaming community is really talking about them in the controller world because it's a mobile controller. So that's good. We'll go with the whole theory, no news is good news. I haven't heard any complaints about these controllers, thus meaning they probably don't break very often. And if they do, warranty, long, Segway. As for the warranty, I busted out my shovel and did a little bit of digging and read the fine print and you do have a limited 90 day warranty. However, this also does carry an extended limited lifetime warranty. Uh, what is it limited to? Well, damn near everything that you would cause damage to the controller to. It has to be natural defects in the materials or workmanship. That's kind of the catch all. But if you can somehow validate or explain that your controller is having natural issues, you technically have a lifetime warranty, which is phenomenal because the only other controller I've tested on this channel that sports a lifetime warranty is the AIM custom controllers, which are nowhere near this price point. They actually start around $160 with my discount code and can get to the $300 mark when fully loaded with options and features. So lifetime warranty, that's awesome. But in order to activate your warranty, you will need to register. They do need some personal information from you, your full name, email address, physical address, the product you bought and the serial number of it. You don't need to explain where you purchased it, which apparently these are the only options. Amazon. How's about you sent this one for review? That's not an option in the drop down. I guess if I had issues, I would just email the PR representative. Now, if you did want to read the fine print about their warranty, click on this link here and you will get all of this boring information in other languages. Alrighty, so the, the D-pad or direction pad, maybe this is your primary movement input. You don't play shooters, so you don't use the analog sticks. You pretty much just play retro games, platformers, maybe some beat em ups. So you're gonna be spending a lot of stick time or pad time on this D-pad. I'm not gonna say you're gonna be a happy camper, but you're also not gonna wanna chuck this thing out of a window. You do get four distinct steps and a nice tactile click to let you know that you actuated each movement. However, diagonal inputs are a real chore and pretty much unhittable, or at least you don't get any kind of a click or sensation to let you know that you just hit a diagonal input at all. I'm gonna give it a three out of five. I can't hit a diagonal input to save my life. 
but it looks cool. I do like the lime green. I think it cosmetically looks cool. Now the face and action buttons, I'm a big fan because they are standard Xbox One or series buttons. And this is where the whole Xbox licensing comes into play. Even though you cannot use it on their consoles, they're using the license dimensions of the Xbox One and series controllers. They're also using the same face or action buttons as well as triggers, bumpers, and thumbsticks, not the D-pad we already mentioned. I don't like that too much. Everything feels identical to a standard Xbox One or series controller. So if you typically play Xbox games on your console, but on the go, you like to use xCloud and continue your progress, maybe play that Halo Infinite via cloud gaming. Good luck, I've tried it, it's a little choppy. You now have the ergonomics and comfort that you're used to at home with a licensed Xbox controller that doesn't work on the console. And that's where these companies get off licensing products for Xbox and PlayStation that don't actually work on the consoles. Face or action buttons are great. There's still a membrane switch. There's a rubber plunger underneath here. There's no tactile mechanical switches, but they look and feel great. I'm gonna give them a four out of five. Now as for the thumbsticks, analog sticks, joysticks, front niblets, uh, they're not swappable. They don't have swappable caps or anything. We are gonna test control freaks, slip over caps and see if they work. The rubber or silicone compound that they use does not vibe well with me. It's not very grippy out of the gate and it didn't get more grippy over time. Warming up from my finger tips, breaking down from my natural hand oils. They didn't get grippier over time. They stayed the same, not a fan. And since you can't swap these out, I recommend getting some kind of control freaks or something to cover these oil slicks because they don't provide the grip you need. I will say I love the cosmetic appearance of having that lime green pop around the thumbstick bases. That looks really good with the contrast of that flat matte white. Mm -mm. Problems continue as I would like just a little bit more resistance from these thumbsticks and there is no anti-friction ring. So you are gonna scrape along the rough plastic of the front shell rather than slick plastic when you are at full lock rubbing against the gates of your thumbsticks. Not a huge deal, especially for a mobile controller. I don't think anybody's competitively playing Apex Legends or COD on their cell phone. Unless you're in a mobile league or something and you're playing other people that are on cell phone with mobile controllers. Now, of course, universal slip over thumbstick caps will work because they slip over anything. They're universal. However, the license control Control freaks, we do have the PlayStation 4 and 5 variant. Too tight, will not comfortably fit over. We've got some red Nintendo Switch Cosmics. Too tight, kind of dangerous, could damage the thumbstick cap. And then you have the licensed Xbox One and Series thumbstick caps. Damn, brother. Mm -mm. None of these work. Maybe I can force this on there? Uh, no control freaks work on this controller. And I'm sure there's one or two people out there that's gonna force them on and damage their thumbstick caps. Somebody that's not overly aggressive, that's just putting these on like a normal consumer, is not gonna be comfortable putting these licensed control freaks on. But you're not screwed, I'd recommend just slipping on some universal caps. I'll have some linked in the description below. Now as for bumpers, as mentioned earlier, they are identical to an Xbox Series controller. In shape, not in texture, as they go with kind of a slick plastic that doesn't provide much grip, and it doesn't have the ribbed bumpy texture on the bumpers that the new series controllers come with. There is, of course, no trigger locks or stops. This isn't a pro or esports controller, but they do have a good resistance, nice linear squeeze, nice snap back to the neutral position. I'm gonna go ahead and give bumpers and triggers a three out of five a pop. They're serviceable, they work, they feel like a stock Xbox controller on the go with your phone. That's not bad, three out of five. Now's about the time in the video where I'd flip her around the backside. We start talking about rear paddles or back buttons. Uh, not applicable, it's not a pro controller. But let's talk a little bit about their proprietary software program and why I'm just not a huge fan. Why I'm not a tremendous fan of their software app, it doesn't really control anything on the controller like trigger dead zones or thumbstick sensitivity curves. Really, it acts as a glorified game launcher, which you really don't need. Sharing my screen, allow me to explain, they do mention directly on the landing page that this is an affiliate app, so companies do need to pay to host their games on this platform. And this is just another application that you need to install, register for, give your information up for, that you don't really need because all of these games can be played directly through their native program, such as Amazon Luna, Steam, PlayStation app, Game Pass, xCloud, or, well, they have Stadia on here. They should probably go ahead and remove that. Google has officially announced they are canceling support for Stadia. Starting January of next year, they are letting the servers run cold. They're actually not allowing purchases on Stadia anymore. So please remove this from your landing page. So you're just installing an app on your phone, giving them your data and launching games through them basically as a middleman when you don't need to. This isn't a PC. You don't need a game launcher. You can just launch directly off of your home screen. It's This is a completely pointless application. I was still able to use this controller playing a ton of Netflix exclusive games as well as Real Racing 3 installed directly off of the iOS store, iOS, Apple store, what that's called? Steve Jobs backpack, God rest him. Now you can purchase this directly from their website. However, I recommend going through Amazon. You have an additional layer of customer support and they have a no questions asked return policy. So if you have any issues and Riot Power isn't giving you the stimulation that you need, Amazon will or Walmart, whatever third party vendor you went through. And another point of confusion that I want to remedy right now, these are pretty much the same controllers. Not pretty much, these are identical minus the colorway, this being lime green for Xbox and this being ES for, you know, 
esports stuff. Now, if you are an Android user and need USB-C support rather than lightning cables, they do have several Android versions as well. And if you are playing with a tablet, like an iPad, they do have a larger version that allows you to clip in your tablet like that. You can, you can do it. If you can dream it, you can do it. But should you is a better question. Just like my man Jeff Goldblum said in Jurassic Park, you're spending all this time trying to figure out if you can, not focusing on if you should. Should you be playing on a tablet? I don't know. Probably not. There's probably much, much better options to play video games. Um, Let's see here. <laughs> tablet. Fuck. As for the unique controls of this controller, controls of this controller, as for the unique buttons or functions, there really isn't a whole heck of a lot. You do have the lightning connector, which you will need to connect your phone, and this is going to automatically provide pass-through charging, which is great. You will use this lightning port next to the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and yes, you can just use your cell phone's stock charger. The only other special or unique button is this little bad boy off to the side which is actually just the share button that would be right here on a standard Xbox controller. However, since you're not going to be playing this on an Xbox console, you can't really use the share function to save a gameplay clip or screenshot. But whatever share options a mobile cloud gaming site might have, you're going to be able to activate them via this little nibble it right there. So let's get into the pros and cons of this controller. Well, let's start with the cons because there's a few of them. This is a somewhat confusing controller. It is a licensed Xbox controller plastered with lime green, has an Xbox button front and center, but cannot be used on the console. A little confusing, but if the customer actually pays attention to the landing page, a simple read of the description, they will find out, hmm, this is for use with iOS devices and does not work with Xbox. But still, just the whole vibes that these licensed controllers give off that can't be played on their home consoles, it tickles me in the wrong jiddly bits. That's the best way for me to articulate that. I don't like it. And the main reason that I don't like it is that these licensed controllers are marketed as that they have the home button that you need to play those specific games. And you really don't. When I'm using an adapter to play an Xbox controller on PlayStation or a PlayStation controller on Switch, or I'm using any controller on PC via plugging it in, Bluetoothing it, or using a wireless dongle or adapter, this little center button, whether it has an Xbox logo, a PlayStation logo, a Nintendo logo, a generic third party logo, it doesn't matter. That's always going to be your home button. Generally, Steam or whatever launcher you're playing through is going to have bindings and this is going to be defaulted to the home button. So it really doesn't matter what logo or emblem is on the outside because the functionality when you press it in is always going to be the same. And that's the main marketing point is that these are the only mobile cloud gaming controllers that you can use to play xCloud games. And that is simply incorrect. Virtually any MFI Apple certified lightning cable controller or controller with Bluetooth will work to play Xbox games via xCloud or streaming directly from your console through like remote play. The next con, it was almost impossible for me to get diagonal inputs on the D-pad. So if you're picking this controller up to use with fighting games, beat em ups, platformers, something where you primarily use the D-pad, not the analog stick, I would look elsewhere. The biggest con in my opinion is that the included cable is not modular. It is permanently affixed. It cannot be swapped out for a different lightning cable. So if this ever gets chewed, crimped, damaged, you have to buy a new $70 controller as opposed to a $8 lightning connector. The biggest con or shortcoming in my opinion is going to be the instruction manual, it is absolutely terrible. Not only is there no physical, tangible pamphlet that you can touch inside the box, you have to scan a QR code and go to a digital manual. That's okay if it's actually informative and gives you any information. It doesn't. Just had to cut the brightness a little bit. And you've got these words. That's it. That's your instruction manual. I'd also like a little bit more clamping force inside of the cell phone clip as I was able to pop my cell phone out relatively easily. I wasn't shaking it that vigorously. Granted, when you're gaming, you're probably just sitting there stationary, but what if something happens and you jerk your controller and your phone pops out? That shouldn't happen. I'd like a little bit more tension here. It does have pass-through charging. I'm going to list that as a pro because nothing depletes your battery life quicker on a cell phone than gaming. The fact that you're able to sustain your battery, you probably won't gain battery life while you're gaming, but you'll at least sustain the same level. So that's cool. I do also like that the controller is connected to your phone via a physical lightning connector rather than Bluetooth or some kind of a wireless dongle shoved in the lightning port or anything like that because that removes any potential input lag or delay that you would get from Bluetooth. I do also like that there is a headphone jack. This is kind of a standard feature on a console controller or a PC controller, but when we're talking about mobile gaming, even things like a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, we have to appreciate and praise as a feature, even though, oh, come on now, standard issue stuff here. It does have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Awesome. Although if you're playing on your iPhone, you could just Bluetooth some AirPods or something and game that way. And the final two pros are the biggest, in my opinion, what makes this a good controller and a recommend in my book. First one being the warranty. It's a lifetime. That's that's long. Can't get much longer than that unless they were to replace the controllers of your children and your children's children as well. The only thing better than a lifetime warranty would be like a family tree warranty, meaning you, uh, your brother's cousin twice removed on your mom's side. Everyone's controllers are covered. But shy of that, this has a lifetime warranty. Two, if you like the ergonomics, the comfort of an Xbox controller, and you actually play Xbox games on the go on your phone via xCloud or any kind of Game Pass streaming or whatever you do in your free time, this is by far the 
closest, i.e. identical, experience to an Xbox controller for mobile gaming. That's really all you needed to hear from the entire video. $70 Xbox shaped controller with a lifetime warranty. Do recommend for iPhone. Only works on iPhone. Couldn't get it working on the PC. So we were unable to test things that we usually do, like the input lag or delay or the thumbstick accuracy inside of Gamepad Tester. It's a mobile controller, so people don't really care about that, I don't think. Drop in the comments section below if you mobile game, and if you do, are you just tip tapping on the touch screen of your phone, or do you Bluetooth a controller to it? And if you do, what controller? Is it, is it the one that I reviewed here today, or is it another janky joint that maybe I haven't touched yet? You stallions and stallionettes have a fantastic afternoon. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach and assist them as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below to get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of gamer heaven join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where i go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my ph balance is on point just kidding starting june i'm going to be live streaming a lot thanks for watching this has been ak40 kevin hosting gamer heaven and i'll see you tomorrow because i upload daily all the time 60 percent of the time sometimes most of the time peace